In the last video we saw that we can use the fast Fourier transformation in NumPy in order to obtain spectral derivatives of functions. For this we created a mesh, excluding the very last point, discretized the function on the mesh and then performed the spectral derivative by first computing the fast Fourier transformation on it, multiplying it with the imaginary unit here in Python 1j and then the wave numbers k. Then we applied the inverse Fourier transformation and extracted the real valued components and saw that the spectral derivative matched the analytical derivative. However, there is a really nice room for improvement because the function that we want to differentiate is real valued. So the values of f are real, so they are not complex. But in general, the Fourier transformation accepts complex valued inputs. So it's a complex to complex mapping. Luckily for us, there is a shortcut. There is another function in the FFT package, which is called RFFT, so real valued Fourier transformation, that only computes the Fourier transformation for those wave number components that are relevant for a real valued function. Because out of the 100 amplitudes for the wave numbers we get with the general Fourier transformation, only half of it or approximately half of it are relevant for us. There's also the matching reverse transformation, so IRFFT, since the real valued Fourier transformation assumes that our function is real valued, we no longer need the dot real because this will always return a real valued array. If we attempt to execute this, however, we will get an error because this returns a 51 dimensional vector, whereas we still have 100 wave numbers. But lucky for us, there's also the function RFFT frequency to set up the wave numbers for the real valued Fourier transformation, and the scaling can be kept the same. So shift enter on K, and then shift enter here, and then shift enter here gives us the same output as before. But in order to be more general and on the safe side, it is always helpful to inform the inverse real Fourier transformation about the size of the real valued vector. So let's say n is equal to n because this can no longer be deduced that easily from the shape of the array or the vector in Fourier space. But with this, we should be good to go. And ultimately, we saved approximately half of the computation. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Here you will find similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next ones.